Well, welcome back to the channel. Tonight I am at a girls volleyball game at the high school where I work, and this is this is a test both for my 70 to 200 that I brought with me, which is too much lens for this game, but it is what it is, um, and a test for me. So my settings are quite simple. There won't be a lot of video probably with this video. There'll be a few shots here and there. Um, the settings are quite simple. So I have this on shutter priority and I have my shutter speed set about 1250, one 1250th of a second. Um, and I may go between there and one 1500th of a second just because I don't follow action very well. Um, and then uh, I've got the ISO kind of floating, but it will mostly be around 2.8. And I'm in the ISO I've got on auto and the uh, the aperture. <laughs> I'm listening to the game behind me. <clears throat> the aperture is set at 2.8, but it will float a little bit depending on the light and how much zoom I've got. Um, and I am really testing out whether the Canon R will do um, eye auto detect focus in a fast paced game. Right now, I have a few times, just the practice, practice shots I've taken with the JV game, there are a few times when it seems to work just fine, and then there are a few times when um, it's not quite keeping up. And I don't know if that's the camera or me, but we'll come back and talk about it here in a little while after the uh, full game starts and I get a little more comfortable with what I'm doing. All right, so we've made it through the JV game and I'm waiting on the varsity game to begin. Um, and I can tell you that the eye focus on the R, which I, you know, I pretty much already knew this, but the R is just not fast enough in tracking to be able to capture um, a good eye focus in such fast paced gaming. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm standing there waiting for somebody to serve the ball and I've got a half a second to a second to establish the shot, then that's not really a problem. But if I'm trying to capture something really fast while they're moving, it's not gonna happen. So I've upped my shutter speed to one two thousandth of a second uh, simply because I'm sort of moving the camera a little bit more than I anticipated. I'm trying to see if that's gonna help me. And then, um, I've changed the focus setting to be sort of more of a bracketed focus. I don't know what it's called, but it looks like two big brackets on the screen and it focuses in between there. Um, and so I'm, I'm going to see how that works for me here when the game starts back up again. All right, things are improving. <laughs> um, so we're about ready to start the uh, JV game and uh, I've taken a few test shots here and there. One of the things I've also done to try to help out a little with speed is to drop my, uh, the, the file type that I'm saving, instead of raw files, which I really don't need, uh, I've dropped it down to sort of a medium JPEG file, not a large JPEG file, but a medium JPEG file, hoping that that will allow it to write to the card faster and get me through some of the, the high speed shutters that I'm doing a little better. So. It's, uh, it's live and learn, that's all I can say. It's just live and learn, like education. Um, learn from our mistakes, and God knows I am making a bunch of them today. And three, two, one. All right, so I've, I've come back to the studio and I've edited the pictures, and out of about 300 shots that I took, I, I saved about 66, and out of those 66 that I posted to Flickr, probably four of them are actually decent photography sports photography shots but this wasn't really just about sports photography this was about seeing if i could get focus on the eosr and to see how well the 70 to 200 worked for me and so what i found was uh the, the pictures that i took of the students serving the ball i got much better results obviously because they're standing in one place for the most part my my settings the focus settings were always on servo so it would follow them as they moved but um you know i had time to 
track them um, as with this shot. And, and, and if you look on the Flickr page, you'll see some others. There's time to focus and it, it, it's not so much sports photography then as it is trying to get um, an image where you can see some type of look on the face or the interaction with the ball and those kinds of things. So uh, that one worked out pretty nicely. Uh, here is a shot that uh, where the focus was just not working, um, and but I didn't really care. I saved it anyway because everybody looked like they were having a good time, and um, but the the focus actually is on um, this this girl just to the right of the or just to the left of the coach, and shooting at f two point eight. Then everybody else, and you can see another one sort of way in the background is on that same plane and is in pretty sharp focus, but the people closest to the to the camera, they're not in focus. Uh, it, 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 it's really soft. And so that, that's the two, that's the 2.8 going on and just trying to figure out how to shoot a whole group of people. And, and where I would like to have put my focus is on this girl just to the right of the coach. Uh, and that would have, that would have made everybody in the front of the picture stand out more. And, and I would have been happier with that. Um, this is a good example of using the wrong focus style. So I mentioned I was using the brackets. And so within the brackets, the camera has a number of focus points and it's basically going to latch onto whatever's closest. So the girl in the number four jersey is actually what's in focus, but I was trying to take a picture of the girl at the net, and she is not in focus. And so that wasn't working for me. Eventually, I went with an expanded, I don't know what they call it, but an expanded single shot focus. So where you have the, 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 the square uh, focus spot, but then you've got nine spots around it that sort of expands that area just a little bit to pick up some other things. And my, my shots came out much better once I did that. Um, this one, I, I like this picture. Uh, you know, it, it, it is, uh, it's a pretty good action shot. The ball was right there at the girl. She is in pretty sharp focus. Um, and, and I've got another one I'll come up on here in a minute that didn't turn out quite like this one. But I, but I do like this shot. And, and I will say that all of these pictures have been cropped pretty heavily from where they started. They were all running about 5,000 ISO. So I've done a little noise reduction. Um, and, and I have to say, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the way they came out when you expand them up and look at them close. Here's another example of, of getting a, a, a server uh, where it's really easy to get focus and then it's just a matter of, of making sure that you've got the ball in the frame. What I was surprised at as I went through this, just as a photographer looking at the end result of the photos from a volleyball game, um, even shooting at high speed frame rates, the that split just a hair split second between shots that ball has moved so far away I could have one shot where the ball's in the frame and another one another five shots after that the ball's gone um, and so it, it's it's really I mean and, and it's why sports photography is so challenging I suppose and why people get paid good money to do it um, so here we were practicing a little bit and again this is one where the focus is just a little soft um, but I was able to get the ball in the frame. The ball is kind of hidden because it's right in front of all of the kids sitting in the uh, bleachers in the back. And so you have to kind of look to make sure you know it's there. Um, and you know, some of my favorite parts of these pictures are looking at the kids in the back anyway. So, <laughs> um, I think out of the night, even though I was on the wrong side of the net, uh, the wrong side of the court rather to get this shot right i this is probably my favorite shot of the night because i've got this girl mid-air she is on the ball that curve of the arm and flick of the wrist uh it, she was just captured at just the right time i wish i had more of her face but it is what it is 
Um, and so, uh, and here's the other shot I was talking about where someone is diving for the ball. And you can see that the ball is, I mean, it's stopped. It's stopped in the frame. It's good and sharp, but she is still moving. And that's just, that's just a testament to how fast she was trying to get to that ball. Um, and so I, I still like this picture, even though she's not in, in tack sharp focus, because it, that motion blur is really showing you just how fast she's going. And then I'll, I'll stop with this one. I, I like this one as well because after she's already served the ball, um, or I think she's getting ready to serve the ball, um, just the way that her hair is flying, the, the anticipation on her face, all of that, it, it, was, it was really, really uh, a, a fun shot to, to look at. So overall, I, I have learned that I'm not a sports photographer once again, but I did enjoy this little uh, outing. Um, I'm, I'm, I think that if I had taken the 28 to 70, uh, as, as Phil Thatch had recommended to me, um, I think I would have enjoyed some of the shots more because as they were closer to me, that 70 millimeter was just... It was too far out there, and I couldn't get everything in the shot that I wanted vertically. Um, and the the twenty eight to seventy could have solved that. But at the same time, uh, where I was standing, looking at a shot like this, the twenty eight to seventy wouldn't really have been far enough. I probably would have needed something a little more. So, uh, you know, it's, it, there's never exactly the right lens. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I can't wait to go back to another one and try it again. We'll see you all next week.